I'm Dave Swift, and I review a new Lifetime deal every day of the week. My reviews are very thorough, but that also means they get to be a little bit long. If you don't got time for that, you're in the right place. This is the Taco Truck Roundup. I'm going to take my full-length reviews and squish them down into just two or three minutes so you get the TLDR version and you can move on with your life. And for extra entertainment, I'll also respond to any comments from the video. All right, let's get right into it. Today's first tool is called Signum.ai. Signum does two things that are seemingly unrelated, but they have been bundled together to make this one tool. Those two things are monitor the internet for trending topics or exploding topics, that's the name of a competing tool, and it also will let you follow someone on LinkedIn. And if they happen to change their profile or mention a specific keyword, you can get a notification. Now, both of these on their own are kind of interesting ideas, but how well are they executed? Well, I found the trends to be not all that interesting. They're fine, but there's just not that many of them and you don't get that much data, just a simple line graph and the line graph really has no specific data points on it. And then two paragraphs to kind of describe what the trending keyword is. And that's kind of it. They do put out a weekly report to show you what trending topics were added that week. But in my brief research, it was just two or three per week. And you know, not all that fascinating. I think there's a lot more potential value in the LinkedIn tracking because you can follow someone that you might want to do business with or even hire down the road. And as they update their profile, you could contact them. But here lays the fatal flaw of Signum in my opinion. And that is the fact that they only update the LinkedIn tracking once per week on Mondays. So even though I went ahead and changed my profile after following myself, by the way, the way this works is you upload a CSV file that contains the business URL, the website of the person that you want to track, as well as their LinkedIn profile. If something changes on LinkedIn, you should get a notification in Signum. So I added myself and I changed things on my LinkedIn profile, but I didn't get any notification. Then I read their help doc and kind of paused my review right there because if I don't have any way to track if this thing actually works, what good is it? So I'm updating my review or rather completing my review inside of this TTR. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna make this rather brief. I'm not gonna extend this to a full length video, but I can tell you, I will go to the tracking section here and unfortunately, there's no new events. So if I go into my profile here, here's my prospect, this is me. It still says I'm managing director, even though I did update that on LinkedIn. Now I can see that Signum actually did scan my profile again because it says the last update was on 10-7, I'm American. So this would have been October 7th, 2024. And as I was making my video in the recording, it said the next update was on 10-7. So I did all my changes to LinkedIn. It scanned it, you know, probably a few hours later and didn't find those changes, which kind of makes me wonder what use this tool has at all. It's only gonna check once per week, and it's not even going to be accurate. And it seems like you folks kind of agree with me that once per week updates is just not enough. Here's Manish Kumar dash BX5 UN in the comments saying, once a week tracking is simply not good enough. Opportunity would have flown by by the time the update comes in, dot, 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 exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. So I totally agree with Manish. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, there's, it just needs to update more. It's a simple thing to fix, and if they, track the profile, it better be 100% accurate. StarMap concurs. They say, I got this yesterday and I agree on all points. All right, so I want to put a bow on Signum and probably not speak of it a whole heck of a lot more unless they do a significant update. But right now, what sort of value can we give this? I never gave it a final score in my original video because I hadn't seen all of the parts in motion. So the trending topics are interesting, but probably not something I'm willing to pay for since I can get similar results from exploding topics for free. They have a paid version as well, but there's pretty good data on their free tool. Uh, and then if the LinkedIn tracking doesn't work or only updates once per week, man, I'm not sure how to score this. It's pretty low. 2.7? I hate to give scores that low, but like there's not really a lot of use here. So let's move on to things a little bit more positive. Next tool is called Video to Page, and I enjoyed this one quite a bit. It's AI powered, of course, and allows you to take any video or audio file 
and convert it into a page, AKA a document. So you upload your file, you grab it off of YouTube, and then it can create a blog post. It can create an SOP, course content, really anything you want. What was most impressive to me about video to page was the fact that there wasn't a lot of need for prompting. It had a template system that was really good and didn't require much intervention in order to get good results. Of course, you could intervene and even do, do so at the topic by topic level. So it kind of breaks up you know, the different sections of the video and you could have custom prompts in each individual section. It also takes screenshots of your video and I thought that was pretty cool as well. And then there's an integration with WordPress or as well as Notion. So if you wanna export your blog posts or SOPs over to the corresponding destination, you can do so with a direct integration. The pricing is great as well because the plans are based on transcription time, not the number of blog posts that are created. So this is a much preferred method to this type of generation rather than a specific number of articles. If you have a bunch of small videos, you're gonna chew up blog posts very quickly, but if it's based on time, you can do a lot more videos. Now in my review, I tried to translate the video from English to French. Well, not the video, but the article that was produced. And the problem I ran into was that the headlines were generating in French, but the article itself was still in English. And even though I used their little AI assistant to do so, and actually one of the templates for that was to translate to a different language, I found later on there's actually another setting which was set to be in English. And if I just change that to French, the whole article would regenerate in the proper language. So that was not included on the original review, but it's definitely worth noting that if you want to translate into other languages, it does actually work properly if you take the right steps. Although in my defense, I'd think they probably shouldn't have the little AI chat offer to translate the article and then not update that setting for you. That should be kind of tied together. Most of the comments for this tool were fairly positive, although we did have Jason Witt 8161 mentioning that Google Notebook does this for free. And I say, well, it kind of does, but it's a lot more limited. Google Notebook is meant to be more for research and taking notes. So it can take a video from YouTube, no, no less, and actually transcribe it for you. And then you can ask it questions about that video and you can even ask it to write a blog post, but the length of the blog post is going to be much shorter and there's not gonna be things like screenshots and there's no direct integration with a CMS, which sure, no big deal if you don't mind copying and pasting things, but if you're doing say 300 different articles, well, that starts to add up. So I think Google Notebook is a very interesting tool and definitely worthy of checking out and just understanding what one of the major players in tech is doing with AI and AI research. I don't think it's a direct replacement for this specific tool anyway. Before I get to my next review, I wanna take a moment just to thank the sponsor of today's video. It's AppSumo, the marketplace for entrepreneurs to find the best software online. I do genuinely think that AppSumo is one of the best places to shop for software online. Highly recommend checking it out. Of course, I've got a link in the description to do so. My thanks to AppSumo for your consistent support of this channel over the years. My next review is Hopper HQ. This is a social media management and link in the bio tool. So you can connect up all of your social media platforms, including Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube, connect them all up and then schedule out your posts on those platforms. There's also a link in the bio page builder where you can go ahead and add in prominent links that you want to share with people and then use that as the bio link on your Instagram or other similar platforms. So hypothetically here, you could get rid of something like a buffer subscription and a link tree subscription with a single purchase over at AppSumo. Now, overall, I found Hopper to be a pretty nice tool. It still has a little room to improve in terms of its user experience, but overall it was very functional and I had no problem scheduling out a post on Facebook and it went out as scheduled as well. So bonus points there. There was, however, a few bugs. The first thing I encountered was the fact that the link in bio page I just could not even create. But the good news is I messaged their support in my video, I messaged the support, they responded during the recording of that video and fixed the bug all inside of like 30, 40 minutes. So that was fairly impressive. I was actually able to create my link in bio page. So that made me very happy. The other things that kind of fell apart were there's some analytics for Facebook and only half of them loaded, the other half did not. Now those same sections worked just fine on Instagram. So either they shouldn't have been in Facebook at all or 
They just didn't finish building them out. I messaged support again, but unfortunately they didn't get it fixed in the recording time of that video. Now Hopper actually did message me a few days later after the recording of that video and let me know that the analytics are no longer available from Facebook and they're going to be removing them from their tool. But as of five days after that message was sent, they're still available on my platform. It just gives me the same error. So I think it wouldn't take very long to just delete that link, but they haven't done it yet. Here's a comment from John Hollins, 1245. They say, hi, Dave. What would be helpful for me would be your ratings for previous AppSumo social tools. I'm sure many of us have bought multiple social tools. So is this worth adding to the list? And I would say only add a tool to the list if you have immediate use for it. We're not trying to just stockpile tools here that never get utilized. If you already have two or three social media management tools, there is absolutely no reason to add Hopper to that list, assuming the other two aren't maxed out with your paying client accounts. So yeah, don't buy Hopper if you already have something similar that still functions and does everything you need. But if it doesn't, then that's when you'd consider another tool. So yeah, I, I don't wanna necessarily directly compare Hopper to an LTD that came out four and a half years ago that maybe is either very developed because it's had four and a half years to get better or maybe just barely getting by because they haven't figured out a game plan to survive in the post LTD era. Yeah, so what I'm trying to say here is software is now a commodity. Buy what you need when you need it. That said, Hopper's a pretty good one. So if you need some social media management, definitely check it out. I gave it a 7.2 out of 10. Our last tool of the week is Butternut AI. This is an AI powered website builder, which has the very, very dramatic promise of building an entire website in 20 seconds. And it's true, it does this, but the quality of the website definitely leaves a lot to be desired. Now I'm gonna get to the comments in a minute, but one of the most frequent comments I received was, your video is 38 minutes long. I thought this was supposed to take 20 seconds. Well. Yeah, it, it takes 20 seconds to generate the website, but there's a lot of features built into Butternut and I wanted to go through them all. So a few of the interesting things I discovered was the fact that it has an entire CMS built in so you can do blog post generation with AI. I don't think a lot of people even notice that because the interface is so clunky to get into it. It doesn't say like create a new blog post. You actually have to add the blog archive page first, and then it'll ask you if you want to start blogging. It's kind of a sneaky, useful tool built in. There's also some basic SEO tools as well as Google Analytics integration. And hey, a chatbot functionality that can actually be trained on the content of the website, live right on your page, and people can engage with it and chat. Again, things that were not very clear on the sales page, but are actually buried right into Butternut. Now, I don't wanna to sound too positive here because Butternut definitely is not great. It just had a few very interesting features like that chatbot and the CMS that was tucked away in there. But overall, I'm probably not going to recommend this to my worst enemy. It's very incomplete in terms of the features and the ability to customize sections to get them to look the way that any normal person might say, hey, I wanna add in maybe a photo to this section, but turns out you can't do that because we can only add entire new sections. We can't just add an element to a single section. It's, it's all kind of preposterous. Also, the websites loaded very, very slow and scored very poorly on PageSpeed Insights, which I know is not everything, but it's still something. And the page isn't serving any dynamic data. It's just gonna be a cached flat page. So I don't understand why it can't be blazing fast. The Gabe World says, I'm convinced that an AI created this website builder, terrible UI. Sean Buckingham didn't dislike the tool quite as much as I did. He said, in my opinion, this is more of a design tool, like for custom wireframes, reloom, but with color. He's gonna use tier one and then reuse the domain with several clients, just moving it around to do mockups. And I think that's awesome. What a great way to utilize a tool that's meant for one thing, but you can find the bit you like and then just maximize that. And then we had a few of these guys here like Joe in 5000 saying, build a website in 20 seconds using a video that takes 38 minutes. Really? And my response to him is really, if you're thinking of spending upwards of 700 bucks for the top tier plan, isn't worth it to see all of the features and figure out if you actually like it. So that's what these videos are all about. Like them or don't watch them. It's up to you.
So overall, I like the concept of Butternut, the idea that AI is eventually going to be able to build websites for people. I think that's super cool, even if it means that my primary job gets replaced. But I don't think Butternut is the tool that's going to do it unless they get some kind of substantial superpower upgraded AI in the near future. I ended up giving Butternut a 5.3 out of 10. So that's gonna do it for this episode of the Taco Truck Roundup. Leave me any comments or questions down below. Hit like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you're new, sign up for the free email newsletter at clientamp.com. Thank you to AppSumo for sponsoring. My name's Dave Swift and I'll see you in the next review.